Alright, to the outsider. I'm gonna try and do this van tour with Tony. He's the guy that helped me with my solar and I've known him since July. Met him on a Facebook uh, Van Life Michigan page. So let's go take a look at his van. The Looking for my questions to do this van tour. There they are. There's my questions. Kind of hard to do a van tour. When... My questions blow away. Hey, Tony. How you doing? I was just watching Tina's The Outsider. <laughs> and I didn't even have to pay him for that. <laughs> 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 All right, well, I want to uh, show everybody your van. All right, let me put my stuff away. Okay, sweet. So what year is this, Tony? 2015. 2015? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Nissan. Mm-hmm, 2,500. Yep. And what, is, what does that mean? It has something special or whatever. What is that? Um, well, it's, it's the same as the 3,500, but it's the 2,500. Do they have... the engine's <laughs> not the big one. Do they have a 1,500? <laughs> 1500, 2500, 3500, get it? <laughs> good question. Uh, see, sometimes I have some good questions. So, yeah, it's got the NV2500 HD. Heavy duty! So does, so, does the HD mean heavy duty? I think so. I'm not sure. So, this is definitely, you know, like really made for a commercial vehicle. A commercial. Well, I'm six feet, so. Hi, Come Pat. On Come on up here. Okay. Cupboard space. Mm-hmm. Tina wants coffee. <laughs> so we gotta make her some coffee. <laughs> what kind of coffee is that? Cherry. Traverse City. City probably, probably why I like it so much. Mm -hmm. So look at you got all kind of little gadgets just like everybody else does. Got to. So you push this button. Now you got the same amount of power as you do at home. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, thousand watt induction cooker so it doesn't this doesn't heat up the pan heats up which is it's a lifesaver when it comes to power mm, sounds interesting interesting and look at my names on it <laughs> there I am you're so snazzy <laughs> this is pretty cool so how long have you had this about a year and a half a year and a half? Yep. Mm. One and a half years. Do you, you have a coffee cup? Yes, I can go get one. So when you um, thought about getting this van, what was your top priorities that you had to have? Headroom. 
Headroom. Yeah. Headroom. Probably about it took me out of the video. Headroom. Yeah, that was number one. Had to. And I'm six foot, so it couldn't be a Ford Transit medium roof because those are only like five ten on the inside. So I had to. I needed something that was. Uh, six feet clearance mm -hmm. after after the build. So I got I got lucky with this one. So all all three of these do this. So they all three pull off for a bed. I got this design off of a UK van life uh, page. Mm -hmm. And not only can you pull it out mm -hmm. and add your cushion on all three to make a full size bed, but it also, you can, you can access the storage. Well, it's kind of complicated. Yeah. What's going on here? There we go. <laughs> you forgot your old screw. I forgot the screw. Access the storage underneath. Okay, so, when you first was researching, I mean, what made you even research van life to actually go as far as you went? Oh, a, oh my goodness, that's like an hour discussion. Um, 60 second version, uh, divorce tore me up financially, so for retirement, I was looking for something cheaper in life and this kind of fit, fit the bill this is cheap well for me I got a house my boys are moving in taking over everything so in the winter times I'm gonna travel I want to travel and they're gonna take care of the bills and I'm gonna travel in the winter and you won't see me until spring so, because my finances were in, uh, crazy, they were crazy, crazy messed up, so this became the cheaper alternative. But how did you find van, how did you find van life? Uh, I found, I found a channel on, on YouTube uh, called Delos, and they were living in their sailboat. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that would be cool. No mortgage, no rent, no taxes. And then I started doing some more research on sailboat living, and <laughs> I realized that's that's not obtainable. It's too expensive. So then I found camper living, mm -hmm. and then from there I found van life. And I've been, yeah, I started researching crazy. What was your, did you have any favorite channels that you found yourself always going to, to help you with your ideas? Yeah, yeah, shout out, uh, 40 Hours of Freedom, FNA Van Life, Explorer's Life, Inman and Beck, uh, Millennials, yeah, I watched a crap ton of their videos. I, I watched more videos on van life than willing to admit I probably wasted a whole year <laughs> I don't know. yeah well, I was I was fixated everybody on does I was that. I was just so fixated oh. on, on how well, well the major questions <laughs> you, you got like a top five major questions when you say I'm gonna live in a van people are like well where are you gonna go to the bathroom yeah. where are you gonna shower where are you gonna do your laundry you know so where are you going to get your mail? How are you going to make money? I mean, uh, those questions are like the top five that hits every van channel. So I started researching and figured it out. So where are you going to get your mail? <laughs> family. Going to family. <laughs> going to family. Yep, I'm going to go family. Okay. So um, what kind of vehicle did you have before you had this van? I did not own a van before this vehicle. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. A truck. A truck. 
Yeah, it was actually as long as this one. So when I bought this, it, it wasn't too much of an adjustment. And it had a big cap on the back, so I, I couldn't see when I, when I reversed. I got used to, you know, utilizing my mirrors. The only thing difference with this than the truck was the, the height. Mm -hmm. When I left, when I left Virginia, the height was 8'4". And I was so afraid I was going to smash the roof. So drive-throughs were a no-no. Mm -hmm. um, I had to watch drive-throughs. Uh, parking garages became a no-no. What else? Oh, low trees. I almost, I almost took out a tree one day somewhere I was used to driving. Mm -hmm. And one day with the van, I'm driving up on it. And, and oh, the car washes. <laughs> Gotta wash the car washes now too. So okay, so take me around. Take me around your. Well, I'm gonna look around your van, and then you gotta tell me like, oh, is there any particular? Is it is it gas or is it gas or diesel? Gas. It's, gas. Gas. Yes, I <laughs> don't mind. I don't mind a diesel. I have nothing against diesel. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, I would love to, re to rebuild a bus, do a bus life. But right now, those people are screaming. The gas prices are higher on diesel than it is regular gas. Right. So here we are with the gas vehicle. But the Mercedes, Mercedes Benz Sprinter is diesel, and that, the oil changes would be a fortune. If you ask me, that's that's top of line vehicle right there. But if you can afford all that, you might as well just freaking buy a $500,000 RV. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, this is only a fraction of the cost. I don't know, you want to start up here? I just put this up. <laughs> just installed this like like two weeks ago. I've had it laying around my bedroom and uh, live simple. Mm -hmm. Simply. I, live, live simply. It's kind of the motto for the van life. Live mm -hmm. simply. Yeah, but then we don't also talk about our storage unit. So live simply, but have a storage unit. Well, that's, <laughs> that's a little side route conversation, yes. But um, if you're fortunate enough to have family, you can store a couple totes there. But uh, mm -hmm. right Look, now, he's got a feather up there. What, what, what do you got a feather so there So I, I was at, I was on the uh, west coast of Lake, Lake Michigan, uh, hanging out uh, up and down the coast. Beautiful sand I had sand between my toes for days um, and I was just sitting there eating and this feather flew in it just flew in the van I had, had the side the screens open and I'm like well that's kind of cool so I took that as a sign that it, I was doing that I was at the right place at the right time and it wants to stay with you so I stuck it right there and that's where she stayed cool so so the roof the roof is just wall panels <clears throat> They're very lightweight. I Did you I... insulate the... Nah, kind of, sort of, no. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I wanted to do spray foam. Couldn't afford it. I realized it was like 600 to to $1,000 to spray foam this whole thing. So I just threw some foam panels in here. It's not very good. But, so that's why it's kind of, sort of, no. But these, but these slots are very lightweight. I use self tappers, and it's. I've been off road with these things, and none of them have buckled or came down. So that's. So you have no foam insulation between the van and your tile. Just just a foam <coughs> sheet that I, I cut and put between there. Oh, you do have. Yeah, yeah. It's just a slot of foam. Uh, I think it's an inch. Yeah. So there's that, but it, it's, I'll be honest with you. I mean, if it ain't, if it ain't spray foam, and I didn't want to use the uh, um, fiberglass, because I didn't want to breathe that, you know, you're, you're open and closing the doors all day. So, unless you can 100% seal that behind drywall, mm -hmm. I don't recommend using that. Okay. Yeah. 
So this is my entry light. Uh, the switch is back here, so when you open up the side door, this comes on. And there's one at the back door. Oh, that's little, pretty neat. Little entry light with the switch. Moving along here, we got the front, the front storage. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, got all my bedding on this side. I got some extra blankets and towels. Then I got my dirty laundry stays on the right side, along with the laundry soap and everything. Gotta have a place for laundry. Mm-hmm, yeah. Little uh, Beach Palm Boulevard. Everybody at the beach love this. I've, I've been in like 12 beaches and lakes and everybody loves it. That was like the first thing I hung up in here after the build. Uh, smoke alarm. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Sleeping at night, you get a little smoke in here. That'll let you know before uh, before you start coughing and lose your breath. Mm -hmm. Then this is my uh, my little nightlight. Mm -hmm. I like it. This is like the last thing I turn off at night when I'm going to bed. So when you were doing your blueprints of this, when yeah. you were in the very beginning stages, yeah. How long did that take you to even design your blueprints? I went through about 10 diagrams and about three years of blueprinting. All right, so see, this is not just a real fast type deal thing that a lot of people do. If you really want to do your research and do something really good, it's going to take you a while and you're really going to have to trust you're going to have some good trustworthy people to help you. Now, did you have any help? No. None. And I have no carpentry skills either. But you do do electric. Not professionally. As a hobby, I do. Friends call me to install plugs and wires, but I'm okay. not licensed. Okay. But electric's the only thing I really had knowledge in. I mean, when it comes to making these face plates, and the, these are called pocket hole screws. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to make a van build and you're serious about cabinetry, get familiar with pocket screws and pocket holes and the little machine that you have to buy for it because that is how you make your your, your, your face plates. Yeah. Okay. I did not have any carpentry skills coming. I, didn't, I haven't built... The only thing I put together was an Ikea table. Well, then what gave you the, you know, the strength to try and even do all this? I mean, you must have... Video research, 40 hours of freedom, uh, explorer's life. <laughs> they just kind of motivated you? You're like, well, if they well, could do it, I'm going to do it too? Well, I was watching them. I'm like, well, how did they do this? And I'd watch the videos and learned about the pocket screws, you know, to make the face buttons. Mm-hmm. And how did they wire up their van? I mean, that bed, I had a blueprint just for the wiring. And then I had the blueprint for the cabinetry. What did you first, what was your first project once you got your blueprints and everything and you decided to start doing the, your design in here? Once I got the van, the first thing I did was the wiring. <laughs> My questions have already blown away. Like, this is like the second time. They're <laughs> really trying to leave me, so I better ask them fast. <laughs> <laughs>